Hunter. I'm Jason Jackson. Welcome to the Bacardi Ocho studio. This is the show that gets you in the know, so let me go ahead and say it to you. Get some guys back, get back on the winning way. Let's not make it complicated. And get back home. And yeah. It's nice to be back from the road trip, to have some more familiar facers back into the fold, and obviously uh, to try to get this first one uh, here tonight. Here's how we're going to start this program by letting you know what's on the program brought to you by Xfinity. Ruth has a scouting report on Jeremy Grant. He bet on himself in free agency, found a new act in Motown. We'll talk about it in Karate's Cuts. Vincent and Struess. Sometimes you have to make a way out of two-way. Gabe and Max get the JCTV treatment. And Eric's Reed. He's got Precious. He's got Hero. Just 75 NBA games between them, but they did their thing in Philly. E. Reed has proof, and in Ruth's truth, the handoff game, it looks simple, it's not. Ruth will give us the inner workings. But first, the opening tip. Who's available for the heat tonight? A question we're willing to repeat until all hands are on deck. Here's who's not, by the way. Still in health and safety protocol, Avery and Jimmy. You got Hero out. Nick Spasms, he talked about that post game. He's been dealing with that for about a week, just too much here. And uh, Leonard is still dealing with that shoulder strain. You got Bam, Gorn, Mo, Kendrick, KZ, and Gabe all available and Spose happy about. Got the clearance uh, today. Those guys are really excited. Um, and each one of them were really inspired too, even though their uh, road trip ended up one and two, just inspired by you know the last couple of games of the guys that uh, you know, really battled out there. And there's your starting lineup for tonight, Ruth. We did not anticipate this. No, the eighth starting lineup in the 11th game of the season. Just a lot of turnover here. Obviously, Gabe Benson and, and KZ getting the first nod. Love that the Quattro is getting the hardwood right there. The Cardinal getting his first career start. There's only been three times this year that the intended lineup, once you kind of figured out exactly what you want to do with the power forward, had been together, two and one in that space. Nothing you can do about it. You don't have that. You just got to push through now with this next group, try to get back on the winning track. There's a lot of talk coming into the season that the carryover of, of players, but we have had a lot of in a, in a unavailability of those players. So that has led to inconsistency by what we're seeing here this season. I think that as a player, though, you just focus on what you can control game to game, and you're just glad to get more guys back into the fold. Well, let's uh, check out Detroit. They got a lot of new faces in the fold. Here are the guys that we knew, right? Griffin Rose, Dumbuya, Mihai Luke. All in the mix and then the draft selection. Hayes, Stewart, Bay, Lee Hayes isn't even available. He's out with a bad hip. And then free agency. Frank Jackson, Wayne Ellington, our buddy Weezy. Mason Plumley, Okafor, Jackson. I love they, can, they don't have enough Jacksons, do they? Trades as well. Young Mr. Wright. Talked about Grant Moore coming from him. And the scavenger. All in the mix for them. So with this new group coach Casey has, he's found that it's really been his second group on the offensive side that's leading the way. Yeah, it, it's an interesting mix of scoring coming from this Piston group, and, and it really is, you know, a, a difference of their starters and their bench. Their starters fewest points in the league. Their bench leads the league in bench scoring. They have a, they're going deep in that bench for those 45 points as well. All right, you wanted to talk about Mr. Grant. Stops in Philly, OKC. Denver looked like the right spot, but he's like, there's a lot of people in the way. Okay, I don't want some rock time. So he, he finds a solid uh, signing and awesome money, and now, individually at least, uh, a wonderful opportunity to produce each night. 
Uh, Jeremy Grant is making the most of this opportunity. And any time as a player, you, you're going to a new team and they're giving you a, an advanced role and more opportunity in that role, he's making the most of it. This is an explosive athlete. He's an isolation player. Puts a ton of pressure on the rim, especially in the open court. Look for him to attack in transition. You have to get back. Takes it coast to coast. He moves well without the basketball, and a lot of that is off of, of cutting action, either with uh, Blake Griffin in an isolation situation looking for cutters. He's active in the pick and roll, either as a ball handler or as a screener. As a ball handler, he gets to that pull-up. As a screener, he's looking to pick and pop and extend the range to the three. Speaking of three, he is a high-volume three-point shooter. Averages just over seven three-point attempts a game. That ties Blake Griffin for most on the team, shooting 38% from behind the arc. We'll get those in catch and shoot or off the bounce. When you take a look at his point production, though, year over year, leading the league in the largest scoring improvement this season. He is plus 12.8 from last season, but he is really has a, a scorer's mentality, not a playmaker. Only 1.8 assists, though, coming with those plus 24 points per game. That scoring improvement brought to you by the Toyota inside look. There's, there's a guy right there putting some digits up. He said, I told you. I told you I could do it. Just give me the rock. Ten straight games of 22 points or more, including career highs of 31 twice. So I know the Nugget fans wanted him to stay out there, but he's a part of the piston machine now. We have just begun on the road. See so a postponement in two losses and find the positivity. That's the surface. When was the last time you got the surface from this program? That one time the day after? Never. So we go a little bit deeper and find the positivity. It's in the broadcast breakdown with Eric Reed and John Crotty. Hello, gentlemen. Hey, John. Good evening to you, Jack. So I'm talking about the, the one and two road trip to Washington and Philadelphia. Four point win against the Wizards. Then the three point overtime loss Tuesday in Philly. The 17 point loss to Philadelphia on Thursday. But Eric Spolstra, I thought he put it well. He said a flickering of encouragement with the way his young guys performed. John, for those last two games, only eight available players. That's the league minimum. And, and Miami got good play even from their two-way players who definitely earn more minutes. They really did. I mean, major uh, positive developments from those guys in my opinion. When you look at it, it's, you got to start with Gabe Vincent uh, and what he did against the 76ers in both those games. His ball handling and distributing, his decision making to get others involved. Five and a half assists a game he averaged uh, throughout the course of those two games uh, really showed his poise and presence and then being able to get inside this is an added dimension for him being able to score at the rim uh, we know him more as an outside shooter he was putting the ball down on the floor slashing and able to finish against that back line defense and then the range beyond the arc this is what he's known for being able to shoot that three ball 36 percent out there uh, really did a nice job knocking down open shots but also being able to create at times off the dribble maybe in transition uh, Gabe Vincent uh, really playing at a high level over those last two games 22 and a half points uh, a game which is extraordinary uh, eight three balls uh, really doing a good job out beyond the arc but you know he doesn't want to be labeled as just a three-point shooter let's listen in on what he had to say about being labeled as a three-point shooter this world loves labels uh, we're so quick to label uh, people for everything uh, but I'm a basketball player at the end of the day I can make plays off the ball I can make plays on the ball um, I can handle it I can defend uh, so, I, I mean, I was able to showcase a little bit of that tonight in terms of getting to the hole and, and shooting the three uh, and getting to the free throw line. So, uh, it's a little bit of everything. That's Gabe Vincent, one of the two two-way players for the Heat. Now, if you're a two-way guy, that means you could play 50 games with your NBA club. Uh, the other two-way guy who may get close to the 50-game mark, Max Struess, the six-foot-five swingman out of DePaul. John, this guy has range, and this guy has a lot of confidence in his game. Yeah, and he should. I mean, he's very, very accomplished again as a, a guy coming in as a two-way contract player. Uh, really plays with a lot of energy and hustle. Great competitor, but his ability to catch and shoot right here is what separates him and is going to keep him in the NBA, in my opinion, for a long time. Really good balance. Great follow through on a shot at 6'5", coming off screens. Really provides a nice target and can knock it down. This young player, very promising and I think uh, really interesting what Coach Spo has seen and the confidence that he's 
getting in both these two-way players. Remember, Struz played two games with Chicago last year, had an ACL injury, but he is back. And part of that very deep team Miami has all the way down to Vincent and Struz, the two-way players that have earned Spo's confidence. There's no hesitation uh, with either one of them. Uh, they're plug-and-play guys. And certainly, if you have your normal complement of, of players and, and veteran guys, they easily uh, can contribute and help you win. Um, both of them uh, you know, had some very good moments in, in these uh, two games. And um, they'll study and they'll continue putting their, their grind. Uh, these guys are workers. Uh, all these young guys are, are workers. So um, we'll get some rest, but they'll go to work film study and drilling and, and get better from these last two games. City, there's always opportunity, and Miami's shorthand of the last few games has provided an excellent stage for a couple of young big men to really step forward, and one of those young big men happened to be Precious Achua, the Heat's top draft pick out of Memphis. The 21-year-old is the number 20 pick. He is our Leon Medical Center's player profile. Well, how about Achua? In his first two NBA starts, his first two double-doubles, 17 points, 13 rebounds, 36 minutes on Tuesday, and comes back with 10 points and 11 boards in 27 minutes on Thursday. In the two games, he had a total of 11 offensive rebounds. This guy, he's, he's a magnet to the glass. He's been Miami's best offensive rebounder all through his rookie season. Bresa Sachua will go back to his role off the bench, but this guy earning more minutes and more confidence. But what you love about it, uh, the athleticism to go along with a high basketball IQ, getting more minutes and getting better with each opportunity. And we mentioned two big men. The other one is second-year man Chris Silva, who fouled out Tuesday in 17 minutes. But Thursday, he had a career-high 13 points against Joel Embiid. He played well. He was forceful and aggressive. Had four dunks in that game against Embiid. Catching and finishing, career-high 13 points. He also played over 20 minutes for just the third time in his career. And there was the signature play of the night. The block on Embiid, nothing but leather. Now there's Silva. He had five offensive rebounds and four assists in the Philadelphia game Tuesday. Then that career-high 13 points and the 21 energetic minutes uh, he played against. Joe L. Embiid, so Miami showing you, uh, even through adversity, John, the kind of depth this year's team has. They haven't had consistency with all the in and out, but they do have depth to weather it. Great to get some healthy bodies back and uh, being able to get guys who are also leaders of the team back and producers, particularly Bam Adebayo and Dragic. Bam in particular gets and attacks the rim uh, with his strong runs there and being able to rebound the ball, guards multiple positions. And don't forget Dragic, top scorer off the bench for Miami, a, a faci facilitator like Bam who can create for himself and others. He will also get back Kendrick Nunn, and while he hasn't played much, he's a guy who can be explosive and score the basketball off the bench uh, quickly, uh, being able to get to the rim or out beyond the arc. Uh, Kendrick Nunn does a, a great job of being able to put the ball down on the floor. Oh, well, six players are, are, are back. Bam, John certainly won him. That's a big boost. Yeah, it is. I mean, he really provides great leadership and matchup problems for opposing teams. The way he steps out on the floor uh, and be able to facilitate. And then Dragic, again, just does such a good job of looking for offense himself, but also getting the bigs involved off that high pick and roll, the dies. He finds them over the top with great lobs. Meanwhile, in just his second year, Tyler Hero right now leading the Heat in scoring in minutes, field goal attempts, and field goals made. And oh, by the way, he's second on the team in rebounding, but he won't play tonight. A sore neck that he's been bothered with for about the last week will keep him out. That's a shame. He's been playing some outstanding basketball. Really has, yeah. All right, that'll do it for us. We will see you at tip-off time. Now let's send it back to Jason Jackson. Gentlemen, we will see you then. Hopefully we'll see you right after the break when we come back. Ruth is going to break down the Heat's handoff game. Listen, this is about being synchronized and together and close. And, yeah, don't go. Take care of the communities there in Ruth. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's get you 
on to something that is awesome in the Miami Heat offense. And we love having Bam back. Kelly does it so well. All the other bigs are learning it. It's that handoff. There's a lot of sets that you run, and you run them to maximize the skill set of your players and also to create an advantage against the defense. And so in Miami's offense, you see a variety of handoffs. And it's not just the bigs handling the action. The first clip we're going to see is what I call the Duncan effect. Because you have one of the best high-volume shooters in the league, the big dribbles at Duncan, sets a screen, gets him open. That's a catch-and-shoot opportunity off a dribble handoff. Not everyone could run that. You out of Duncan on your team for that one. Second one, a pitch ahead pass. Watch Tyler get the ball back, quickly attack uh, off the bounce. He draws multiple defenders. There's three defenders in the lane. He knows exactly where he's going to go with the basketball. He has a corner kick to Struess. That's a great look out of your offense for a catch and shoot three. Defensively, teams are adjusting because of how good Miami is with handoffs. You can see, watch Ben Simmons fight over the top. He's denying Duncan the basketball. He knows how dangerous he is in that action. There's a couple different options when they take away your primary look. Achua can, can watch Duncan go over the top. He can hit him on the curl. Or this, I thought, was a great take. He read the defense well, made a strong attack. Or if you have a live dribble, you just fake the handoff and attack the basket. Last one is a big-to-big -big handoff. Look, the guards don't always have to be involved in this play. This is a great action between uh, Kelly Olenek and Silva. Defensively, bigs usually switch. Well, this is a late switch, so Kelly gets a nice pocket pass to Silva where he gets fouled heading to the rim. Miami leads the league in direct handoffs per game and also points off of those handoffs. This is an action that you're going to see a lot. Detroit, though, defensively, they're 26th in the league in handoff efficiency, so they're at the bottom in defending this action. With all due respect, you know full well my favorite basketball player on earth is young Jordan Jackson out of Columbus High School. We were talking before I left the house today about going to the Keys when he's on break. I don't think he knew that I meant this. <laughs> that we're right now, Jordan, we're doing it. Right now, with, your, with, your, with your favorite person, Ruth. Sorry, Take us to the Keys, please. Sorry to disappoint, Jordan. No, but no, he loves this segment. <laughs> what are you talking about? The first key is going to be no pick sixes. The turnovers are going to happen throughout the course of the game. It's not just the quantity of turnovers, but the type of turnovers. Miami needs to eliminate the unforced errors and the ones that leave the easy opportunities going the other way. 20 turns for 37 points. That's too much. The second key is win consecutive quarters. One common thread throughout my meetings losses has been the fact that they have not won consecutive quarters. Consistency is something the Heat are striving for right now, and that happens first possession to possession, quarter to quarter, then game to game. Lastly, mitigate their bench. We already talked about it. The, the Pistons have the highest scoring bench in the league. 41% of their points come off the bench. Derrick Rhodes leads all players off the bench and pick and rolls, averaging about 14 a game. You got to know the entire scouting report against this Detroit Pistons team because they go deep into their bench. For whatever reason on this program, we do not punish those who show up tardy. We give them the top story one more time before we get out of here. And that's who's available and who's not. Add to the list of not Tyler Hero. Those next spasms, Ruth, he talked about post game on Thursday. Too much of an issue today. And then we have Jimmy Avery still in protocol. Yeah, Tyler had been dealing with that for a little over a week. So obviously playing it safe with Tyler and then Jimmy and Avery. We know how much they mean to, to the success of the Heat. Not available tonight. Let's take a peek at some of the guys coming on back. Great to have Gorn running downhill with that shoulder. Man, we need that, right? Just energy and effort from him. And, of course, Bam as well. I mean, when you have uh, your, your uh, greatest facilitator and, and an all-star center back into the mix, that's just uh, a gift. And then KZ getting his first nod at the starting lineup tonight. I mean, as a rookie, I mean, so many emotions going into that. Your first time ever starting an NBA game. Stanford Cardinals stand up. He's ready to go. Oh, look at that look. Come on, there's a former MVP ready to roll. We've got the Pistons. We've got the Heat. We're back in paradise. And it's all next. Good evening, the Heat Nation. Welcome back inside the Heat Towns for the first of two in a row against the Pistons. And hello again, everybody. I'm Eric Reed, alongside the point guard, John Crotty. Jason Jackson will join us in the next segment. John, in each of the last two games in Philadelphia for the Heat, Miami had the league minimum eight available players. As for tonight, 
We got comebacks and we got setbacks. The, the setbacks, our lead story, Jimmy Butler misses another game. And so does Tyler Hero miss his first game of the season. He's been the Heat's leading scorer this year. But, John, the good news is Bam Adebayo, Goran Dragic, Kendrick Nunn lead a group of six players back tonight. Solid reinforcements on the way, in particular Bam and Goran Dragic. Bam just providing so much leadership and the ability to facilitate, as does Gorn, getting others involved. Both these guys can score. They provide leadership. Uh, they'll be a focal point of the offense, both in the starting unit and the reserve group. Well, he'd have played better at home this year than they have so far on the road. And tonight they play the only winless road team in the NBA. The Detroit Pistons, who have missed the playoffs nine of the last 11 years, have lost nine of their first 11 games this year. That's the worst record in the league. Toyota Trent also tells you, only winless team on the road. They've lost seven of their first eight. Their only wins by three over Boston and in overtime against Phoenix. They do rank last in the league in field goal percentage. They're next to last in field goal percentage defense. Let's switch gears to our Papa John's key ingredient. That's regarding six-time All-Star Blake Griffin, the former Los Angeles Clipper high flyer. But since joining the Pistons four years ago, that once bright career is now in recession. Right now, career lows in points per game and field goal attempts averaging under 14 points and under 40% shooting. He's relying heavily on the three-point shot. The Detroit did, John, make one very good personnel move in this offseason. Yeah, the Taco Bell take is Jeremy Grant, who's their rising young star coming over from Denver, where he averaged about 12 points a game. He has really upped his ability to score the basketball, almost 25 points, doing it out beyond the arc, slashing driver off the dribble, loves to isolate and take advantage, uh, really gets inside with the ability to dribble with either hand and, and slash and finish. He's got great length at 6'8", so just really a skilled attacker overall is Jeremy Grant uh, stretching the floor with about seven three-point attempts a game and can finish with athleticism. Now the seventh-year man out of Syracuse has finally found a place he can star in. He's with his fourth different team. He comes to the Pistons on a three-year, $60 million free agent deal. Right now, he's the number 13 scorer in the NBA. He's off to a great start. Meanwhile, the defending Eastern Conference champs have a rising core of young players. That includes second-year man KZ Akpala. Tonight will be his 10th NBA game, and he will make his first.